Bulls fans, Adam Harry back again with another Bulls Retro Corner Review. And as you can see from the cover, we are going over Codex Tyranids Second Edition for Warhammer 40K. So yeah, this is the book to me that uh, basically started it all for the Tyranids. This is the book that, that transformed them basically from kind of a back of the book army, back of the box for, for Space Hulk into a real live, full on, Army with a codex supplement, and it. Uh, this is my favorite book. <laughs> one of my favorite books, really, but uh, one of my favorite codexes of all time for sure. So this is back of the box, or back of the book, excuse me. Uh, we have a uh, copyright, I believe, of 95. So you can tell there it's 88 pages, not full color, but uh, we'll go ahead and dive right on in. It's got some of my favorite models, uh, good stuff of all time. This is actually Big Red book, as you see here, from the really cool sticker that he made up. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> just great stuff here. We've gone through, we've, we've done the epic review uh, of, of the Hive War book, which is all the tyranny units for epic. So I'm excited to get, this is kind of the same era. So a lot of recent use of some of the same assets, but pretty cool stuff. And we'll run through a lot of this stuff. I'm not gonna take, take the time to, uh, to go through each page individually, but we'll stop with some of the cool stuff. But it's got a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff I want to get to. So just go see the back of uh, High Fleet Behemoth, the backstory, the assaults on uh, Tyron, which is where we get the name Tyranid from. Uh, it's the Tyron Primus was the, uh, the great world spanning, you know, the, the big capital basically of, uh, of the Tyron sector. It got overrun and then they named the uh, species known as, now known as Tyranids after, after that. So that was the first time we saw them. Then we talk about uh, their uh, journey to McCrag. I want to point out a couple things real quick. These are Hormigants with, I guess, spike rifles. This is an early spike rifle. And these weird looking worm creatures, those are actually rippers. Uh, as you can see here, they look a lot different <laughs> than they do now. Uh, they don't have the mandibles, they don't have the, the armor plating on the back, um, but they still tear stuff up. So, and it does talk about Inquisitor Qu Crippman and his, uh, this soul sex. This is all backstory, it's all really good stuff. But some of the earliest literature that we have uh, about the Tyranid race, so pretty cool stuff. I always love this art too, uh, with the crazy, um, crazy lines and everything. So, anyway, moving on, uh, we've got cool stuff. This is another really great shot. We have a Lictor in the foreground or in the, the side here. That's actually a Zonothrope down here. Uh, some Hormigon stuff going on there. Uh, sorry, Termagon stuff. Those guys are Termagons back there with the spike crystals. My bad. There's a Hormigon with the crazy spindly claws and stuff and then the big one in the background there. So, uh, High Fleet Kraken, this is the second major High Fleet, I believe. So, they go through there, we go through all Ultramarines Invasion, stuff like that. And I'm not gonna read through all of that stuff, so we'll skip ahead a little bit. It's a lot of backstory about the Tyranids. If you're a Tyranid fan, you should definitely try to get your hands on a copy of this book just to read that stuff. Uh, but going through here, looking at the different uh, Tyranid forces in this section, these are just quick rundowns of each unit. Basically, the, the, the codex consisted of a handful of troop choices, uh, hive turrets, carnifexes, <laughs> and some special one-off. That's pretty much it, but it's pretty cool stuff. You can see the hive turret was the linchpin, literally, of the army. Um, it's just, uh, this is the early hive mind rules here. If you're within 18 inches of the tyrant, you don't need to make any leadership tests. They automatically pass those. If you're broken within 18 inches of a hive tyrant, in the rally phase, they automatically rally and he caused terror. Uh, his stat profile was really mean. It's still one of the meanest ones out there. Uh, back in second, he had your individual movement, he moved six. Weapon skill nine, ballistic skill seven. So not just a boss in close combat, he could also shoot like a champ. Uh, strength six, tough six, five wounds, which is more than today's. Uh, initiative eight, five attacks, leadership 10. It's pretty cool there. The Carnifex, uh, this is my classic favorite Carnifex incarnation of all time. Uh, it's the uh, Screamer Killer version with the four, uh, four scything talons and then the uh, Bioplasma. The reason they call it the Screamer Killer, and I know I've mentioned this before, is the sound that it would make before the Bioplasma was fired. Uh, it's pretty cool. It, it, it's basically just a plasma, a, a plasma blast, but uh, back in the day it was, it was pretty cool um, what it would do. Uh, if it doesn't move during the turn, uh, it can spew a shot of bioplasm. So it was a mover shoot, just like any regular shooting attack. But stat-wise, um, the Carnifex was a boss. Again, weapon skill six, uh, BS four, strength seven, toughness eight. That's right, tough eight bug with 10 stinking wounds, 10. 
Give me that Carnifex back. Initiative six, four attacks, leadership 10. So pretty awesome, he had a crushing attack. Uh, normally it's treating seven in power in uh, close combat. They can roll one attack dice instead with the uh, strength 10 hit and causing D3 wounds. So again, that's the, the basically the early incarnation of a smash attack. So Carnifex is, we'll get to the model later. <laughs> Here's one of the uh, models I'm really glad they changed because it looks goofy now and it looked goofy, goofy back then, but uh, this is what a Tyranid warrior look, used to look like. He used to call these guys chickens because they had giant chicken legs and really awkwardly shaped. So uh, the Tyranid warriors though, profile wise, pretty cool stuff. They also had the, the hive mind rule, but it was a 12 inch version instead of the 18 inch version. They caused fear. Um, they were movement six, weapon skill six, uh, BS four, strength five, toughness five, with two wounds each, initiative five, and three, three attacks at leadership 10. So um, pretty pretty cool stat line. Again, um, if you looked at that today, that would uh, maybe help out with some of the instant death stuff if they're toughness five with two wounds instead of toughness four with three wounds. That's why cheering the players keep going back and forth about that, uh, whether it's better be Eternal Warrior with, with three wounds or whatever. But uh, one of the earliest incarnations of the Tyranid Warrior was this. And again, the weapon skill six, BS4. So pretty cool stuff. The Lictor, again, he's been around since the early days as well. That model's changed quite a bit too. Uh, weapon skill seven, movement six again. BS4, strength six, toughness five, three wounds, initiative eight, four attacks. Uh, he had acute senses, chameleon skills, hiding, all the, all the ton of special rules that haven't really gone away. Uh, flesh hooks, again, was a shooting attack cost poison so just crazy stuff the zone of the rope this is uh probably the uh compared to the card effects i would even say that this is more of a of a change just model wise the zone of throat used to be a two-legged you know bipedal thing with a giant you know head crown uh honestly it looked a lot like predator from uh the movies you know that, that giant head with the crazy crown stuff coming off the top. I mean, you, I mean if you if you sculpt the dreadlocks on there, you could, you know what I'm talking about. But it has since changed, which is okay. Uh, it's now got the uh, the skinny body and the big head, which is which is fine. But uh, cool stuff all the way around. Uh, he's only movement four, so he's one of the slower bugs. Uh, he's weapon skill four, BS five. So again, more of a focus on shooting. Straight four, tough four, three wounds, three initiatives. So very slow. Uh, two attacks, leadership ten. But the cool thing was Warp Blast worked a lot different as, as did their uh, their Warp Field. So um, basically the Warp Field was roll 2d6 against an attack that hits the Zone of Throat. If the roll beats the strength value of the attack, the shield stops harming, stops it from harming the Zone of Throat, which is really cool. Um, so if the 2d6 roll is equal or less, the attack pierces the shield and roll to wound is normal. Um, so that's pretty cool. I don't, I'm not gonna read all the rules here, but the Warp Blast worked a lot differently. Depending on how many forced cards you used on it, uh, would up the range and the strength and the damage, armor penetration, all that fun stuff. So the more force cards you chucked at it, the more deadly it became. Um, again, that's the old, old psychic mechanic. We no longer use that. It's a little convoluted, but um, you had another deck and a whole, whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we had Termagants here, which are just their basic little bug. Uh, very fast at uh, movement six, which again, most stuff in second edition moved Four inches if you're infantry based so moving six was a was a pretty good advantage here uh weapon skill four bs3 strength and toughness three uh one wound initiative four one attack leadership five so they're you know they're just little tiny bugs that will run at you for cheap and then again ripper swarms we've talked about those uh pretty pretty crazy ripper swarms gargoyles again one of the models that have changed quite a bit had these crazy claws for legs they got, and they're certainly they didn't really have legs they had crazy mandible legs, and then wings, and then they had the uh, the, the, the devour or whatever, uh, you know, cannon <laughs> that it had there. So they were flint, they were flying, so they had a movement of 20. Uh, they had threes across the board with weapon skill, bullet skill, strength and toughness, one wound, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, they could fly high, which is another special rule, and then they had that flame spurt, flame, uh, spurt ability too. So pretty crazy. Hormigons, again, another smaller bug. Uh, that model actually got changed quite a bit. Um, I think there was some legal issues with the original sculpts. Uh, they made them look a little bit too like the too much like the Xenomorphs. And uh, there was rumor that there was a legal case going around, but I don't think anything ever came of it because they changed the sculpts. Biovores again have been around since since day one. 
We've seen those bad boys. Was there anything cool for the horn I wanted to call out? Not really. They didn't have a ballistic skill because they were just designed to shoot and they had leap, which was cool. Uh, Biovores, same deal. They had launching spore mines and stuff like that. And here's the spore mine special rules. Uh, pretty typical stuff there. Gene Stealers. Uh, this is where we get that classic Gene Stealer look from, which the model has since changed very slightly, very subtly, but uh, you still get the basic Gene Stealers. Um, uh, basically, move six, weapon skill seven. So they were very deadly in close combat with that really high weapon skill. No bullet skills, they didn't have a shooting attack anyway. Strength six, toughness four. How cool would that be to have some strength six gene seals running at you? Um, with, with running claws? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, weapon skill one, it should have seven, uh, four attacks. So pretty scary. Uh, this was a really cool section in the book, one of my favorites. The gene steal of Steeler Cult Forces. <clears throat> this is where we get the uh, awesome gene stealer patriarch from with the crazy pimp medallion from the 60s. Uh, Patriarch, the Gene Stealer cult was really cool because it had a, its own little backstory um, where basically Gene Stealers would send infiltrators to a planet that was gonna get attacked by the by the hive tyrant, or the hive mind, and they would go there, they would um, kinda through subterfuge and infiltration kinda get into the government, uh, start a cult, people would get psychically touched by the the, the hive mind and there was this whole thing going on and they would get more and more people and then these hybrids would start appearing with gene sealers and then as you got further away from the the core strand of the gene sealer onto the hybrids and the brood brothers and stuff like that they'd become more and more human like but they would have that weird uh head shape so it's a really cool thing the gene sealer cult um it's one of the lists i always always want G uh, gglb to bring back i think it'd be awesome if we got to have a, a gene sealer cult list again so uh, but that's pretty much it for the uh, army section I believe we get into a little bit more this is just more backstory about them um, we get into the miniatures here which is one of the best parts about this old book is the uh, the heavy metal team when they start doing their painting this is from the space hulk board game the first edition there so um, we get to look at the hive tyrants i want to just point this out and i'll zoom in here but uh hive tyrants look how much they've changed and uh, they still have that call out to some of the old stuff. Uh, the colors of the Gene Steelers also, I know, you know, each each uh, fleet had their own color scheme or whatever, but the Gene Steelers had the, or Gene Steelers, the, the Tyranids, excuse me, had a really bright kind of gaudy look to them with the symbiotic weapons and the crazy lash whips and stuff like that. So, um, but, the, but the purple and the green were just really jumpy and punchy. As you see there and then down here is an alternate paint scheme same deal you got the bone sword and stuff like that just very punchy uh these are more of a deep colors i think whereas this one was very punchy and green and just kind of jumped off the table at you which was really cool we look over here at the carnifexes again my favorite model possibly of all time <laughs> i know it looks terrible by today's standards but man uh when i first saw one of these i was like what the heck that is awesome with the, the crazy face, with the stretched skin and the, the bioplasma scream and then the, just the, the crazy claws. Um, man, I've converted up some of the new kits to be a, a similar loadout, similar look, uh, but obviously the positioning is completely different. I know there's a conversion floating around out there on the internet of a guy that did the, the crazy uh, green stuff job on the new kit to make it look like this. That's an amazing conversion, so props to that guy. I am not that skilled with green stuff and I just, I just don't want to ruin the model. But, <laughs> but the throwback, that, that's throwback Carnifexes. So if you have a couple of those lying around, you want to send in a bowl so I can have them, that'd be great. So I'll totally use them. But uh, anyway, check that out. Uh, again, they were on square bases, another thing I want to call out. But if you look at the size comparison, um, I know there's some artwork of the, the new Carnifex kit attacking a layman rust, but you can see here just the size difference. I mean, compared to today's, because uh, you can get a lemon rust, you can still see the size difference. So Carnifexes were a lot more uh, compact, I guess is the right word. Same deal with uh, the Hive Tyrants. Hive Tyrants were about the same size as Carnifexes. If you look at them today, uh, minus the wings, obviously. If you look at them today, side by side, the Carnifexes are definitely a lot more bulky than the uh, old school Hive Tyrants. So cool stuff. And we get to the uh, Tyranid Invasion of the Imperium Galactic Maps. I love these old maps just because you get to see uh, you know exactly what it looks like. So we have here this section here is the the big Milky Way galaxy as you see there. Uh, what are that? What is this? Squat homeworlds? 
we have Earth right here, um, and then on the far side of the galaxy on the opposite side is uh, Ultramar. This is where the first, you know, behemoth invaded um, and it attacked him, pushed all the way to McCrag. You can see here uh, Tyron. This is a Deptus Mechanicus uh, exploration base, which was on the first first of fall. And then we have all of the McCrag stuff. The Ultramarines uh, doing a great job. Good job, Ultramarines, holding off the uh, the behemoth and Kraken invasions, pretty much. Um, oh, what's this? Kalf? Huh? Where have I heard that name before? I don't know. Kalf, uh, McCrag. <laughs> so just some cool stuff there. Um, Car four, Hive World, which has been cleansed. There's a Craft World Iandin, which we know what happens there. So this is Hive Fleet Kraken. And again, if you look at the fluff, initially there was this giant behemoth force that came in, it was a first wave, and it just tried to muscle its way through our galaxy, through our, sorry, through our solar system, through our, our, uh, our spiral galaxy. Had it right the first time. Yeah, I tried to muscle its way through, got stopped by the Ultramarines. The second major invasion, Kraken, High Fleet Kraken comes through. This is about 250 years later, give or take uh, a decade or so. And uh, High Fleet Kraken comes in and instead of being one giant tendril, it's multiple little tendrils coming in at different angles and stuff like that, to breaks off and attacks and stuff like that. So uh, the Tyranids are adapting. And then uh, I think the current fluff has yet another fleet coming up through the, basically the galactic planes like this. They're coming up through the bottom and uh, through the center. So that's how they've updated it thus far. Anyway, that's why I love those galactic maps. Moving on, we have the old school Tyranid Warriors. And again, I'm gonna zoom on these because possibly my least favorite. I'm really glad they changed them. <laughs> Some people love the chicken walkers. Uh, I was not a fan of the Tyranid Warrior chickens. As you can see here, they had that, maybe it was turkeys. I think they called them turkeys too, just because of the way their heads looked and they had that gobbler coming off their neck. Anyway, the Tyranid chicken turkeys, as you can see there's a brood, and they're again on square bases. So it's a cool little battle of, the, of them against the Eldar. And then over here on this page, we have gargoyles. Uh, this is one of those models that I'm super glad they changed as well, because again, these were all metal. So you look at that thing, look at that gargoyle, and just imagine like, just imagine it tipping over, and then it tips and it shatters into a billion pieces because it was metal and the glue just snapped right off. But ugh. You didn't see a lot of those on the table for that reason. <laughs> At least I didn't locally where I grew up playing because because of that reason. So it's brood of gargoyles. And then we get to more stuff here. Old school termagants. Boom! Check those bad boys out. They haven't changed too, too much. But again, you have the termagant with the spike rifle up here. Strangle web, which I uh, hope they bring that back one day as an actual bit. Flesh borers, and then, uh, yeah, more spiker rifle action. And then uh, the gene sealers, I actually have some of these models. These were one of the, some of the early plastics, actually. Um, I actually have a bunch of these that I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of. Um, they're painted up, pretty cool. So um, I just want gene sealers to be good. That's all I'm saying. Make them awesome so I can use my old models. But uh, really cool stuff. Those were plastics, again, from the Space Hall kit that got moved over. You could buy them as well in, in their own box set. But. Good stuff. Tyranid Broods, we'll look more at this stuff. Uh, the Old School Biovore, we'll get to the lictors in a second, but you see there on the left, Old School Biovore, again on a small base, square base, excuse me. And uh, what's crazy about these is they, the way they've developed over time. Again, this is some of the earliest ones. Um, if you read about them, they are an offshoot of a Tyranid Orc kind of hybrid, which if, makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because fungus spreads by how? Spores. And um, they have that orky kind of head structure with the oversized underjaw. So that's where that comes from. If you're ever wondering why biovore shoots spore mines, think about it. Orcs, fungus, biovores, hybrids of tyranids and orcs, da da, spore mines. So cool stuff. Um, moving over here, another termagant brew down there. But the Lictor, this is one of those models that really cool. I'm glad they changed it though, just because it was very spindly and uh, would break quite a bit. Again, all metal would shatter on uh, tipping and dropping, so all those extra bits. The crazy flesh hooks though, and again, this is back to that color palette that they used. Again, that, that nice rich purple and then those bright punchy reds and greens and stuff like that, just pretty crazy looking. Um, one thing I do wanna point out, and again, I'm gonna zoom in on this just so it's very clear. That's his jaw underneath, <laughs> and the crazy Cthulhu tentacles coming out of the top. I know uh, the new sculpts don't have that under jaw with the crazy, 
crazy teeth, but just wanted to point that out. Just one of those interesting tidbits. Um, more stuff there, picture-wise. These crazy mission cards, they have their own uh, own missions, obviously, because Tyranids, um, instead of using just the standard book missions, but um, they have a trap and the Tyranid attack. One of the coolest things, though, was the uh, squad event table. I'm gonna zoom in. This brings back a lot of memories. This one right here, let me kind of focus in on that so you guys can see. But uh, you would roll for, uh, for different squads. On a one through three, no effect, nothing happens. For battle fatigue, the squad counts as uh, all Tyranids as causing fear, and those that normally cause fear cause terror. This special event will not affect a vehicle squadron's normal immunity psychology, so whatever. My favorite rule of all time, Jones is acting strangely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a throwback call out to uh, aliens, Jonesy. So, uh, Jones is actually changing. You roll a d6 at the start of each turn of turn. On a roll of a six, randomly select a model from the squad. The model is still alive. It is instantly killed by a barbed strangler. See the Tyranid uh, bioweapon section for full rules. That's right, Jonesy exploded. Bioweapon hit to the squad. And then last but not least, six. They're all around. The squad is not deployed at the start of the game. Instead, it moves on from the edge of the table and the player's deployment zone at the start of turn two. Roll a d6 on a four, uh, this, the four plus, on a, on, sorry, on a roll of a four or more, a randomly chosen member of the squad disappears without trace before the start of the game. So, Tyranids, they were messing with you from way back in the day. And then they had their own draw, uh, Dreadnought Walker event table, vehicle event table, stuff like that. More awesome Tyranid art there, as you see. I, I do like the art. I know I don't like the model, but I gotta. I do appreciate the uh, the art of the Tyranid Warrior. Pretty cool stuff. That's a big uh, uh, bio type in the background too, coming at you. So um, more Tyranid fluff, which is always a plus. Skip around. We go through the bio weapons real fast. I'm not gonna read these because these have changed so much, um, and uh, profiles and stuff don't match up. Second edition to seventh edition or Current edition doesn't match up at all. So, Bone Swords, Last Whip, you can see where that's all come from. Spine Fist, Strangle Web, it's a basic weapon back in the day. Death Bitters, uh, Flame Spur, Flesh Pork, good old Flesh Hooks. Spike Rifle, which, again, I have a feeling they're gonna bring that back. I don't know, I, just, it'd be neat. Something to change it up between Flesh Borers and Devourers all the time. The Devourer, you can see the artwork has changed quite a bit. These, again, are all weapon symbiotes, so these are their own, uh, they are the Tyranids, separate organisms that the uh, warriors and stuff would use, the Tyranid life forms would use. So I want to point this one out too, the Barb Strangler. <laughs> you look here at the this egg sac looking thing at the back, and this one down here, you can see it's very Geiger-esque. Um, so you can see why they uh, may have changed the Barb Strangler um, from back in the day. It looks um, kind of like a face hugger. I can see it. So TW. IP law, you know, they love that stuff. Venom can, uh, that one has changed a little bit too. It's different things that it's funny too because they had two handles because the Tyranids had four arms, so they would hold them top and bottom, bioplasma and stuff like that. Choosing a target, um, they had their own special rules, so how they would do that. Uh, Tyranid special weapons, they had their own, a bunch of little rules, different strategies and stuff like that. I'm not going to read all of this stuff, but fighting, firing in a hand combat. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is a legitimate and <laughs> desperate tactic that can backfire. So you can actually shoot you know, into close combat. You used to be able to do that uh, on purpose. So tearing in all that stuff. Uh, the different biomorphs, we'll go through all those good things. We're running out of time here, so I'm just kind of blowing through the rest of the stuff. But uh, the swarm selection for points, you can check this out. Uh, hive tyrants plus one, meaning you had to have one or more. Um, in your list, but it's 164 points. That's how much a high tyrant used to cost. So pretty crazy. Carnifexes, uh, where are they at? They're coming up. Xenothropes to 120, which we've gotten a big drop points there. Uh, Lictors, same deal. Warriors, 55 points per model. Gene Sealers were 28 points. Still really expensive. Hormagons, Termagons were six. Hormagons were eight points. Uh, Gargoyles were 16 points. Um, Carnifex is 199, and this is again, these are before upgrades. I want to throw that out there, so pretty crazy. Biovores were only 20 points per model, pretty crazy. Uh, Gene Sealer Cult Army Lists, 
Again, those are the special rules for taking the genes to their cult. All their different characters. The Patriarch was 72 points before upgrades. Genes to their Magus was 107. Uh, hybrids and stuff like that. Um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. And they could take basically IG type stuff. So they had allies they could take. Heavy weapon teams, rapier, laser destroyers, tarantulas, thud guns, mole mortars, all that fun stuff. Tactics for Tyranids, they talk about all that fun stuff, which maybe doesn't apply too much today, but I'm gonna go through the uh, catalog pictures, these old metal models. You can see here, that thing was a nightmare if it fell. If you dropped one of these lictors, it would just shatter. Uh, these guys were thankfully mostly one piece models, so whatever. Hormagons, this is what I was talking about here, these bad boys with the elongated heads and the spiked arms, you could see uh, where they could have gotten in trouble <laughs> with a couple of movie studios there. But um, also, if they dropped one of those, those things weighed a ton, and if they tipped over or broke, it was just a nightmare. Uh, plastics, that bad boy was actually in plastic, so I say surprised, and I thought it was metal, but there you have it. Um, but yeah, these gene sealers were, I think, two-piece, Plastic sprue and the, the Warriors were also plastic. And then the, the back, the, the classic catalog of games, you have the second edition and all the different codecs and everything like that. So, and the Dark Millennium expansion. Carnifex again, giant metal body, weight a ton, four arms, the just craziness right there. Gargoyles, again, all metal, Thyavor or metal. And then last but certainly not least, the Hive turret and all of this awesomeness. So, pretty cool stuff. Um, that's it for this retro corner review thanks for uh, traveling with me down this memory lane rat hole again one of my favorite codexes of all time one of my favorite armies the tyranids so great stuff i'm gonna go home and uh i'm gonna cut this video and i'm actually gonna read reread some of that fluff because it's good times this is adam harry from bowl signing off have a good one